Awesome. Well, I'm like excited because I know we've had a couple weeks where Melissa and I were both traveling. So we're back and we're here to add value again. Um, and I'm excited for today's episode because I feel like, you know, we're going to talk about something that I feel like a lot of women are uncomfortable talking about. But, uh, you know, oddly enough, boys talk about it, I think, more freely. But we need to talk about it. And we're talking about your poop. Um, you know, and <laughs> yep. <laughs> our hope is that you will learn today about, you know, what are some of the indicators because our bodies really do tell us, right? Unless, um, I know Melissa's got some great resources she's going to share around like color, texture, things like that. But one of the things I was saying to her is I feel like as I was navigating a lot of my gut stuff, I would end up constipated and I hated it, but I just thought that was normal. And unfortunately, I talked to so many women who go through that in particular, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then, yes, transversely, there's folks who are constantly having diarrhea. We have a nation full of people who think they have IBS, um, you know, and that's an unpopular opinion. But you guys, IBS mm -hmm. is typically leaky gut and just you've got, got to do some bigger work and, and you don't have to be medicated. And again, I know that might sound like, wait, but my doctor said, um, but you know, those things can actually be treated through diet and, and mm -hmm. supplements. And, um, yep. but you know, we're going to dig into some of these things because, you know, it's, it's healthy for you to be having bowel movements. You need to have, you know, what is it? One to three a day is what is recommended mm -hmm. normal. Mm -hmm. Um, and I will say thanks to Melissa, you know, um, I am now in that place and, Yay! and <laughs> <laughs> feels and you good. Do feel a lot better. You guys, mm -hmm. uh, your skin will be clearer. Um, if you are experiencing stomach bloat and other things, those things go away. Like your body needs to work through that in order for you to feel your best. So, um, so we want to talk about that today. And again, I know it's not like a a comfortable thing to talk about, but we need to talk about it because, you know, if something is going on, then that's a huge indicator of some issues mm -hmm. in your overall health and well being. And if your digestive system is not working, we've got some real problems, right? Um, and we know that's our, that's how we eliminate toxins. And if we're not eliminating properly, then they're stuck. So yep. I don't yep. know if you want to take it away from that, <laughs> Melissa. And, with that beautiful introduction, of oh course. Oh my goodness, it was totally beautiful. Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate that. And I, because that used to be me too, right? Totally constipated, especially when I was so sick with MS. Oh my goodness, it would be days. And I didn't realize at that time the importance of, you know, having a bowel mood. I've been like that since I was a kid, right? And so when you grow up like that, you just don't even think about it. It's like, yeah, well, okay, here we are again. Yeah. And also the whole diarrhea thing or the flip-flopping back between the two. Like, you know, so many people have a, you know, they they can't use the bathroom for three, four days. And then the next two days, they can't get out of the bathroom. You know, there's that, that issue as well. I know before I cut out gluten, um, you know, that would happen. It'd be three, four days mm -hmm. and then I'd have such bad stomach pain. So then mm -hmm. of course I'd be taking anything I could find to try mm -hmm. to go. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it was, you know, like not able to function for a couple of days because I was running in and out because I was taking different diuretics to try to help. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, I think, you know, a lot of, and I, I'm using women, you guys, just because I, I, I hear this a lot from women, but certainly I'm sure men are going through this cycle too, you know, um, and it's a really unhealthy pattern. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So we're going to use a different, a couple different um, kind of visuals today. One is my favorite. It's called the Bristol stools chart. <laughs> it's all over the web. If you just search for Bristol stool chart, you will find it. But it's actually a way that I use for my clients, especially the more sensitive clients that this is really hard subject for them, right? And and it's really hard for them to think about how do I report this or even write this down? You know, I'm not taking pictures. I don't even want to look. And this is a way we can use the Bristol stool chart that they can just do, you know, type one or type four, or whatever, and yeah. don't have to feel really self-conscious about it. Yeah. So I'm ju just going to share my screen. Healthline has a really cool one, very simple. Um. And 
if it's okay, let's just kind of talk through these and what do these mean? And I'm also going to go into the different like colors mm. of stool yeah. because a lot of times when I, I'm doing work with someone, they'll say, they'll text me and go, okay, my stool is a little gray today. And I know exactly what's happening, right? Mm. Or they'll say it's a little orange, has a little orange tinge or a little yellow tinge. I know exactly what's happening and we can address it like now, wow. um, a little bit yellow. It's really dark and sticky. You know, I know exactly what's happening. Wow. So let's just go through this quickly. Um, so type one, typically that's constipation, right? Yeah. When you do actually have a bowel movement, it's not very satisfying and it's very like pebbly sausage shaped, but lumpy. A lot of times this can happen when the body is not processing well, there's some dehydration, but it's still slow coming through the body. When we see things like this type one, type through type two and type five and type six, I immediately go to what is happening in the digestive process, coming through too fast or too slow. And then we start asking the question, why? Mm -hmm. Is it inflammation? Which yes, it almost always is. Is it bacteria? Yes, it almost always is. Those two things go hand in hand, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, do we have food sensitivities that are causing this? Do we have parasites that are causing this? Do we, you know, what do we have that isn't working right? Do we not have enough bile flow? All those things. Number four is the one you want to have, right? And especially when I'm talking with little kids, when they're <laughs> like, it's a brown banana. You want to have a brown banana. <laughs> that might spoil you guys for wanting to eat bananas. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is the one you really want to go towards. Anything else is, you know, you might have one or two of those, you know, off just a little bit. But if that is consistently, like if you're having type six and it's three or four times a day, we need to talk, you know, figure out what's going on. If you can't go, or if you're going between the two of these all the time, we really need to figure out what's going on. And it really doesn't matter what your diagnosis is, your big, hairy, scary diagnosis, or how many there are. If your body is not processing through your food and the waste products, that is like baseline for any, like any disease process, period. Yeah. Awesome. So what do you see in your world, Melissa, around like when people are experiencing specific um, like emotional issues and things that are coming into their life, like stressors and, you know, big things that are happening? What do you see? ending up for how their bodies process through stool. Well, it's so funny because as you're talking, I was thinking honestly of like a lot of the little kids that I work with that are on the spectrum, <clears throat> which, mm -hmm. you know, we have some of them at my dance studio. I've worked with some at my office, whatever in the past, but you know, in the past when I worked, my first internship was at a residential mm -hmm. and it was so not uncommon for the those kids to be constipated and I can't tell mm -hmm. you I want to say pretty much every single one of them was on some type of Miralax right yeah um which by the way we're not condoning Miralax you guys we'll talk about that um, <laughs> um you know so I feel like there was a lot of kids going through the type one stuff um mm -hmm. you know I think you know it's interesting that term anal retentive you know and, and mm -hmm. we think of like if I have women who will have a lot of control issues <clears throat> you know, I hear about, you know, well, I have difficulty going to the bathroom or, you know, they're very mm -hmm. constipated, um, mm -hmm. you know, certainly on the health side of the things, because obviously I'm coaching people in all sorts of areas, you know, if folks are doing like our 30 days to healthy living program, you know, they might start with type one, but as they're cutting out inflammatory foods, mm -hmm. they're starting to have better bowel movements, you know, feeling better. They're, you know, seeing that digestion is going more easily. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know for myself, that process has certainly changed through our, our work together and, you know, through the work with even, you know, past um, practitioners, you know, in, in healing myself, because I was always like, 
in the type one area, you know, which meant mm -hmm. I just was constantly like bloated all the time. Right. Um, so, you know, but I think we see a lot of kids, especially here's what happens with spectrum disorders. And I'm sure you've seen this, you know, it's like parents will say, well, they only eat a few things. Yeah. Well, here's the problem though, you guys, is if those few things are white flour um, and they're not nutrient dense, you're not helping them to get toxins out of their body, right? So then they're not feeling good. Um, they're grouchy because their belly's hurt. And so you're going to see more behavioral stuff because, you know, maybe they can't mm -hmm. articulate that they don't feel well physically, right? And so, um, you know, so we may not think about it in that full circle way, but, you know, often when we had kids who were behaviorally really challenged, they were also constipated. Mm-hmm. It's so, a big deal. Right. It's a big deal, you know, and think about mm -hmm. how uncomfortable that is as an adult. We can just share like, man, that feels awful. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I know when I used to travel, I, that would automatically mean probably like mm -hmm. three or four days I wasn't able to go. And I'd bring all my like teas and this and that and whatever. But, you know, it's such a lousy feeling. And then it's like, mm -hmm. you feel like you can't fit into your clothes and it's just the whole thing. Um, and so, you know, if you've been in stages where that's happened to you, then think about if you're a little kid and this is just your everyday existence, right? And so, yeah. Um, and we don't want people to get into the habit of having to take different things like Amiralax, whatever, you know, and there's certainly better types of fiber support, right? But also best is through fruits, vegetables, right? Our diets. Um, you know, it's funny, I had an aversion of bananas for a really long, long time, we're talking about bananas, but not because of what we were just talking about, but because, you know, I remember we couldn't give them to the kids who were constipated mm. because they said they would like eat in constant. So for years, I like wouldn't eat them. And I, I like really enjoyed bananas. And so like, I remember a couple of years ago, I would put like half a banana in my, my shake and, you know, cause I'm like, I want the potassium. I liked it, add a little bit of sweetness, whatever. And I was like, oh. Like that's not making it so I can't go to the bathroom, you know? So it's like these weird things we hear over the years that stick. Um, mm -hmm. Now, is there any like stock in that? I don't know. Maybe Melissa, you can, you know, speak to that. But um, I'm like, it's probably not bananas that are to blame. It's probably the fact that these kids are eating boxes full of goldfish crackers and, you know, Cheez-Its and, <laughs> mm -hmm. and strange other things and not ingesting enough fruits and vegetables, you know? So um, so yeah, I mean, it's interesting because as I'm thinking about different pockets of people, and maybe that's why I really have this awareness about women with constipation because of doing so many 30 day coaching rounds, um, mm -hmm. with folks, you know, that is something that a lot of women share with me. And, and mm -hmm. what, one of the quickest ways I see them sort through that is to cut out gluten and mm -hmm. dairy. And then they start to see an immediate improvement, right? Which I'm sure is no surprise to you, um, but is, mm -hmm. I think, fascinating, right? Like how quick that can make a difference. Yeah, yeah, it does. I think it's really, we need to think about how our bodies are trying to talk to us, right? So constipation, at least for me, doing my, you know, working with people with, autoimmune and chronic illness constipation is a huge clue of what their body has been going through for quite some time and can actually be one of the foundational drivers for why their body is in the place it is so when we think about this a lot of times we're like oh yeah whatever you know it's just part of my life but it needs to be something that we don't just gloss over and walk away from right so I'm going to pop, and just so you guys know, this is Healthline, or sorry, Listra, Physical Therapy and Wellness. Um, that's where I was um, sharing their chart. If you ever want to look at their information on this page, it's a good one. Um, we're going to pop over here to Healthline because I want to talk about the different colors of the poo. And you, if this is a thing for you, maybe write some of this stuff down, take some notes, because as a mom or a dad, especially if you have a kiddo that is experiencing health issues, you're able to get a few clues this way, right? Especially if they're nonverbal and you can do this for yourself, right? And really understand a little bit more of what's happening. So 
let's kind of start over here. So if your stools are, and please ask questions and, you know, whatever Melissa as I go around yeah. through this. Um, so if your stool's a little bit more on the yellow side, we need to really think about what is happening in the digestive process. So sometimes this can mean the body isn't breaking down fat. I'm, I'm not into the too much fat. I don't think we can get too much fat, especially good fat. Uh, it's really hard to get too much fat because our bodies need that really deeply. But this also means that your body is not breaking it down. The bile flow is really sluggish and potentially we actually have um, an infection going on in the gut, possibly. We've got malabsorption. Sometimes people who have really have celiac disease and it's quite advanced, will see a yellow tinge to their stool. A lot of times it will really, really, really smell, right? And it will also be, a lot of times this one will be um, loose, have a loose stool. The other piece of this is sometimes you'll see uh, a floating, it may really float and almost look like an oil slick on top of the water. Mm. That can happen here. Um, if your stool is a little bit red, make sure you didn't just eat beets. I was going to say beets. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I can't tell you how many people will, you know, beets are amazing for liver wellness, right? Yeah. So they'll start bringing in beets and they're like, oh my gosh, what's happening? Like, it's okay. <laughs> it's just beets or even things like, um, there's a couple of other different foods. Um, rhubarb will do that. Um, anything that kind of is naturally has a red pigment will yep. make your stool more red, but if it's a darker red, you really need to be checking into that because there could be some, um, a little bit of seepage or bleeding or maybe hemorrhoids or something like that. That's, that's pretty serious. So get a hold of your practitioner. If you haven't been eating beets or something like that, right, um, right. or something, you know, innocuous, maybe you had fruit loops and most of them were red or something, you know? <laughs> Um, this one I see <clears throat> or hear about uh, quite often when we're, we're working with deep, um, how do I say, working with the liver, working with the bile flow, it, especially if somebody doesn't have their gallbladder anymore, mm. um, I will hear about this one. And mm. so pale, white, or clay colored, the bile duct and bile flow is not working well. Right. And sometimes that this will be just one time you'll have this. Um, often there will be, you know, some other symptoms that go along with this. If your bile duct is actually blocked, it will be very, very pale or white. Um, a lot of times this can be addressed very easily with just simple foods, you know, things like cruciferous vegetables, um, bringing in like beets. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> will help anything to clear and help that bile flow really thin and work much better. If you don't have a gallbladder, you need to be supporting your body always, 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 always with some sort of a bile supplement, bile support, like ox bile, something like that to be able to help your body. That what flow. are your thoughts, Melissa? I feel like, you know, I've had people say like, you know, they've had their gallbladder removed and it's uh -huh. like, well, you know, the doctor said, I don't really need my gallbladder, but like, Ooh. I don't, I don't, I'm like, I don't believe, I don't believe God makes mistakes. And I feel like mm -hmm. our organs are essential. I think that's an interesting thing for someone to tell someone like, oh, you don't really need that. Um, we, we don't but, have spare parts. Right. So I was like, <laughs> what the heck? But I feel like I'm hearing about that more and more and more. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a big deal. Like, you know, somebody having the C-section and they just took the gallbladder out too. I'm like, what? Uh, why? <laughs> so your gallbladder is a huge, 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 huge component in actually helping your digestive flow happen at the right time and in the right amount. Okay. So your liver is this really amazing, large, um, organ that is tucked right up under your right rib like it's really a large organ and the gallbladder is tucked up right inside of it right so you've got a bio your bile flow duct come your bile duct comes out and then you have another duct that goes up into the gallbladder so what happens when the gallbladder is working right 
it is able to collect some of that bile and mix it with a special salt solution okay. to create bile salts. So that is literally your, almost like your Dawn dish soap. Okay. It cleanses, but it also breaks down food. And it's a huge, huge, like that needs to work right. So if you get in into, like if you eat something that's particularly fatty, that gallbladder will kind of go you know, like that and really push out that bile, it will gauge how much bile you need according to the food that's coming in. It's really ingenious. Our bodies are so mm. freaking crazy. Um, but when that isn't there, then that bile flow is just kind of a small drip. There's no way for the body to really control how much comes into the digestive tract. So not that we should stop eating fats. It's hard to break them down without your gallbladder because that action is gone. Mm -hmm. So supplementing with that is pretty easy and very necessary. Yeah. I love Thanks. that. Thank you. Yeah. I just, it's like, it's something I feel like I'm hearing more and more and I'm like, uh. yeah, that's yeah. We don't have spare parts. <laughs> like, uh, I'm like I can't ever say well it's funny like even with the 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 floaters you were talking about like I remember years ago mm -hmm. I had a client it was one of my like kind of early 30-day clients mm -hmm. and she was talking about seeing that in you know her, mm -hmm. her bowel movements and you know I mean it always depends on how deep people want to go right right with what's going on but you know I work with a lot of young girls too. And it's like amazing to me how many of them mm -hmm. notice that when they are eating a lot of gluten, they don't feel good, mm -hmm. but you know, it's like, then they'll say to a parent like, well, you know, I don't know if I should keep eating gluten. And then the parents like, well, like you know, it becomes hard. And it's like, but if your kid's telling yeah. you that they're noticing this doesn't help them feel good. And then, you know, especially mm -hmm. where celiac has that component in the female yeah. genetic line. Yep. 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 All right, sorry, oh, I, I, so I could so go into that. <laughs> yeah. I just am like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's a big one. Um, if the stools are particularly black. So if you're taking a binder or something like activated charcoal, anything that's binding toxins in the body and really working through the liver, yeah. this, your stool is going to be dark, but it should not be sticky or tarry. Does that make sense? So yeah. if it gets sticky or tarry, um, iron supplements, oh, I could go off on those a little bit. Um, <laughs> anything that's like bismuth, peptobismol or anything like that, because it's kind of has a little bit of drawing agent, it can really change that. We need to also be thinking if it becomes kind of a tarry consistency, okay. you need to be getting blood work and figuring out what the heck is going on because that's not a good one. Um, super green. If your stools are green, you probably just ate a lot of <laughs> green. I was going to say like when I take, <laughs> I have a chlorophyll supplement that yeah. I love. Um, yeah. and I don't take it every day. It's funny. Like I will know like when my body needs it. And if I take it though, then yeah, it's like real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Another thing could be if your stool is passing through too quickly or if there is a, a real bile rush that, that can be a little bit green, can turn it a little bit green. Um, so this one, I don't worry too much about. Usually we can talk about the food and what's going on, supplements and stuff and figure out why it's green. Um, just a tinge of green, not too worried about it. Any shade of brown, you're good. Unless it gets into really light brown, then we need to think about the bile flow and all of that. Okay. awesome wow. so quick 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 <laughs> but any anything that is unclear or that you're like what no I just you know it's it's interesting like you know like I know we did an episode talking about my parasite journey and so obviously through that I've been paying mm -hmm. more attention to these things you yeah. know it's not that we want to you know I don't think anyone really wants to like look but but you need to sometimes because we get a lot of information from that, right? And so, exactly. um, you know, what I have learned for sure is, um, yeah, like 
I'm grateful. Now I'm reassured because the chart, I'm like, all right, we're, we're doing good over here, but, um, but really interesting. <laughs> and that's really helpful because like I said, sometimes with like clients who are doing the 30 day, they'll ask mm-hmm. those questions and I'll be honest, mm-hmm. I haven't known how to answer. So I can refer them to that and say, Hey, you know what, check this out. And, mm-hmm. and again, you guys, like if there's something deeper going on, you got to talk to someone like Melissa yeah. to work through it. Um, because you these are not the out. kind of things you want to figure out on your own. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 There's also a piece of, and, and I was, there's a piece in here that has a lot, like you were talking about somebody that has IBS, right? So we think of that, but also knowing that a lot of people who are diagnosed with IBS have a very real, like one of the biggest triggers is anxiety or stress. Like something happens and they're in the bathroom in five minutes, right? Yeah. So could you speak to that just a little bit and kind of help yeah, us understand so, that process? I mean, I think the thing, so I, and this happens, I mean, you know, I'm in front of so many people. So particularly with my Arbon business, which, you know, I've been with them it'll be nine years in January and love, love, love my company. And so I will often present when I'm doing like, you know, Mm -hmm. whether it's online or in person, you know, some of our nutrition options, because quite frankly, I have realized most people don't eat the way like me and my husband do. And I am ultra regimented with my food. Um, and so, um, and quite frankly, you guys like, yeah, it, there are restrictions because of allergies, but I really don't want to eat the way I see a lot of people eat because I'm not confused as to why they feel like crap. And so, you know, I love veggies, you know, such an absurd amount of veggies, um, you know, and so it always fascinates me when I meet someone and they'll be like, well, well, I need to talk to my doctor about, you know, like our protein powder. Um, And then I'm watching them like drink a can of Pepsi. Um, or like, right. and, and I'm not saying this to be a jerk, you guys, I'm saying it because it's like, it's just fascinating because like, if you really want to overhaul your health, you need to step back and try to be objective. Mm-hmm. Like, gosh, you know, sometimes I'll meet people who smoke and, you know, I, I can't fathom why anyone would smoke this day and age, but I, you know, people do obviously. Um, but it's like, well, you know, again, are you then really that confused as to why you don't feel good? And so, but I'm a big fan of helping people make changes and whether, you know, and starting with small ones for sure. And, um, you know, and sometimes that is, you know, in relation to an IBS diagnosis. And I can't tell you how many times I have folks again, say that to me. And then I'm watching them ingest things that are not healthy. And so, you know, it'll be like, well, you know, I can't eat vegetables because of my IBS. Mm. What? Like, you know, you need nutrients. And if you are eating eating foods that are not nutrient dense, your body's not going to heal, right? And so if you're eating processed crap, you know, I think about when I had an ulcer, like when I was younger and they're like, eat bland food. So I'm eating like white toast, which hello, like full of gluten, which little did I know at the time that like, I can't have that, but and it's like mashed potatoes and like just things that don't have nutrients in them. And, you know, it's fascinating to me because, you know, it can be this mindset around, well, I don't want to eat that because it's healthy. Healthy food doesn't taste good, mm, you know? Yeah. And, but the IBS thing blows my mind because the amount of times people tell me they have that going on, but then I'm observing them because a lot of times it'll be like an in-person party setting and I'm watching them eat like cheese and processed meats and all this stuff. And I'm like, what? You know, I'm like, okay. Like, you know, and I'm like, drinking my greens or whatever. And I'm like, you know, we, we're questioning things that can add health versus questioning our doctors. Like, why couldn't I have this green supplement? Why does my stomach hurt so much when I'm eating, you know, things with fiber in it? Like, you know, we're not getting to the core of the problem. And I feel like we have an overdiagnosis of IBS 
and Crohn's and things like that, you know, and, and a lot of people are medicated for these things or taking all sorts of stuff with no real end in sight. And I'm sure you see it when people come to you, but I just think not enough people are questioning, why can't you heal this? Because I believe, and you can certainly correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like those things can be healed because to be honest with you, if you had talked to me, you know, seven years ago about what was going on with my stomach, I probably would have been labeled as having IBS, but it's like, no, you have a gluten intolerance and you have a dairy intolerance and your gut lining is shredded. And, you know, so I get really frustrated, I guess, with the overdiagnosis of that, because I feel like then people are bought into these weird lies and, and they're not, you know, I even think about like the outdated food pyramid, like we're not taught how to eat, you know, and we're not, there's, you know, and again, that's the rabbit hole you and I could dive into for hours around food production here in the U.S. and yada, yada, but like, just, you know, like I love when I see kids even come to dance and they've got like, you know, those new little bento boxes the mom's doing, they've got veggies and fruit. And then like, you know, maybe some like organic turkey rolled up and they've got like, you know, and I love that because I'm like, you know what, kids are a lot braver around these things. And I think as adults, we've got to check ourselves and say, you know what, like if your kid's not eating this stuff, is it because you're handing them an easy snack or is it that they genuinely have tried something and said, I don't like this, but another piece that too, and I know I'm kind of going off the path, but I think people need to look at this whole thing because you know, I'll be coaching people through like our 30 day, your taste buds change. I mean, I'm yep, even seeing do. that with, you know, my little lady, like she used to be such a sugar addict, right? And and she's not my bio child. So I'm not the one who pumped her full of sugar, but, um, you know, I forever would be on her. Like you can't just keep getting candy and like, mm-hmm. you know, and now it's like, she doesn't want it because, mm-hmm. you know, we've changed her diet so much, but, mm-hmm. you know, people will say that to me as they're going through their 30 day, I mean, I have a friend whose brother almost died, had a massive like heart attack. He's lost a couple hundred pounds, like he's worked his tail off, working out, like really regimented with his food. And um, we were chatting because, you know, now it's like he loves salads and he loves, mm-hmm. you know, like people think it's weird that like, I love a good salad, like, mm-hmm. and, um, and, but I put all sorts of crazy stuff in there, you know? And so I just think, you know, it's, it's, changing how you're looking at what you're eating and, and what does it actually do? You know, um, you know, not just like eating cause you're hungry, eating to be mindful mm-hmm. about, is this adding nutrients to my body? Is this going to give right. me strength? Right? Like mm-hmm. I even was a friend of mine made a great post yesterday about all these weird vegan meat substitutes. Oh yeah. Right. And they're full <laughs> of so much crap, you guys. And you know, so, and I don't have any issue with someone wanting to be vegan, if that's what you're doing, but do it in a whole food-based way, because I'm hard pressed to believe that me eating an organic grass-fed steak that's full of all sorts of good stuff is worse than me eating like a Beyond burger that's full of like a bunch of crap I can't pronounce, right? And I just think it's it's weird, you know? And so we've become, you know, this condition to kind of like what's easy but then we now have like all these people you know we didn't have all this IBS and stuff like 40 50 years ago because we didn't have all this processed food you know now we live in a time where kids just open a cabinet and grab a bunch of snacks like I grew up in a time when you asked for snacks um (laughs) and quite frankly you know they were not often you know, things that were processed, right? There's always mm-hmm. fruit in the fridge and, and things like mm-hmm. that. And so, um, no, I think we have to really step back and look at all these things because mm-hmm. I just think it's weird, you know, and when someone will say to me, I know when I eat these things, I feel like crap, but they taste so good. Mm. Yeah. What? You know, I, I, I mean, I've had people yeah. say to me, well, what do you eat? Because I have a lengthy list of things I don't eat. Um, I'm like, there's lots of things I, you know, it's like seven things I can't eat. There's thousands of other things I can, you know, and I don't, mm-hmm. I don't yeah. look at it like, Oh, I can't have gluten. I don't care. Mm-hmm. 
you know? Um, and so I think too, we have to shift our mindset around that, around mm-hmm. whatever any yeah. restriction is, you know, like, you know, if you're diabetic and you can't have sugar, like, okay, I get it. But nowadays you guys like, gosh, I mean, I choose not to eat processed sugar anyway. So it's like, but there's so many delicious things made with coconut sugar and Mm -hmm. that like, they taste so much better and regular sugar actually makes me like pass out on the spot. Like it's the weirdest thing at this point. (laughs) I cannot like white sugar puts me in an immediate like coma. Um, And, and Mm -hmm. so, you know, I think we have to, as a, population start looking at how we feel when we eat certain things yeah you know paying attention like you know when you were showing me some of those colors I'm like gray and white like that, that's not normal you guys no. and if that's what you're experiencing mm. then you really need to talk to Melissa or any another practitioner and I'm not saying doctor because again like I feel like they're too quick to medicate and try to fix the immediate problem but not fixing the root cause yeah right and you can put a Band-Aid on something forever, right? You can keep patching up the leak, but eventually you're going to have to overhaul the whole problem. Um, yeah. And I know that like living through it, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, like, I mean, Me Liz, like I know I shared with you, like, I mean, I used to be so freaking skinny, but I was so malnourished, you guys. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't because I wasn't eating. Like, that's not a like, right. you know, mm-hmm. I mean, there was periods yeah. of time where that was going on too, but like when... I wasn't eating things that my body could even actually absorb. Exactly. I wasn't eating things mm-hmm. that were adding nutrients. Um, mm-hmm. I wasn't eating enough of the right things, you yeah. know? And then my gut lining was so, you know, annihilated that like I couldn't even like process stuff, right? So right. at a certain point, we have to stop looking at, you know, some of these external things. We have to really look inside and go, all right, like, yeah. do I want to be healthy or do I want to be you know, skinny, or do I want to be, you know, I do want to feel great every day, or do I want to, you know, eat pizza every day or whatever, you know? And so, I don't know. I just think that we have kind of this, we we're over-diagnosing some of this stuff incorrectly, and then we're not really helping people, you know? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And then yeah. it co-signs their ability to kind of keep making bad choices. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because something you said earlier really just, I mean, I tell people this all the time and we talk about it and sometimes it's the littlest decisions, right? But it's this decision of how can I add health or how can I add wellness? How can I add nutrition? How can I nourish me as a person? And, and it helps to think like that when you're thinking about food choices, when you're thinking about you know, I just saw, you know, my stool was gray. What am I going to do about this? You know, I, I, this is something that happens for me or some of these other things that we've been talking about is how can I create, how can I add wellness for myself? How can I really, and sometimes it's surprising how small the shifts are that we need to make, right? It's not always this huge overhaul. Um, that has to be made all at once. It's steps and it's choices. It's daily going, okay, I'm going to do this for me. Yeah. I really love that. Yeah. I think Uh, we need to start paying attention to the whole picture more, you know, because I do, I think people are very stuck on, you know, how they want to feel right now and and whatever. And, And all that is, you know, I get it. It's relevant, but I think at a certain point, you get sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. And then what do you do? Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I used to sleep so much. Like, I mean, when I think about like my young self, before I knew about all these things that I wasn't supposed to be eating and my stomach was a mess and I was doing all these things and so tired, exhausted. Yep. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it doesn't have to be that way. And I just Mm -hmm. think, and you know, no, it's not. And Mm-mm. you know like even as simple as like you know I meal prep every week right and people are like right. oh, I don't have time I run three businesses I make the time to do that so that I have nourishing food for myself for my mm-hmm. husband so that we have 
good things to eat so that neither mm-hmm. one of us is grabbing crap. Um, mm-hmm. you know, cause we don't have crap in the house, quite frankly. And so, um, yeah, you know, and even it's our choices. Treats, yeah, you know, or, or, mm-hmm. so it's really being mindful. And I think, you know, once you start making those changes, it makes a huge difference, but it's also adds up in just how you feel, you know, when you look exactly. at people who are living longer and they mm-hmm. look great and you're like, wow, you know, but there's always a lot of choices that are going into how they're showing. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Um, yeah. So I think it's just something that we have to we need to look at. And I'm not saying that to diminish how anyone's feeling physically. So I hope no one feels that way. I want you to go, you know what, I can figure out a better solution than taking this medication. Um, mm-hmm. Or, you know, like I, mean, I have a good friend who had a large portion of her like colon removed and you know, in her Mm -hmm. intestines. And, you know, I just think to myself, like, what if they had had access or known about, you know, some Mm -hmm. of this stuff first? Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That just makes me sad to hear about that. Yeah. Cause she's missing so much of what her body needs to actually process and absorb nutrition. I mean, the actual mechanism is not there for pieces of that. So now her body has to figure out other ways to, to kind of fill in the holes. <clears throat> she's going to, excuse me, she's going to have to be really intentional yeah. about how she does that. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I hope this helps someone, you know, I'm sure I know sometimes right. you guys probably wrap up and go, Ugh. but I want, <laughs> you know, we share this to give you hope to empower you to make a change because I know like how sick I was. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and not listening to my body and just so many things I did that were not serving me and to feel the way I do now. And even through this process of us fine tuning stuff, Melissa, mm-hmm. and, you know, really realizing mm-hmm. like, yeah. okay, like, I don't know. And, and you guys, and what I want to highlight is how much it impacts your mental health. Oh, my huge. mental health is better than it's ever been. Ever. And it's not because my world is, I've had more kind of ideal spots in my life to be very like, I have a lovely life. So don't anyone misconstrue that please. But like, I, stress is real. There's factors moving all the time for all of us. Um, but I, and, and Melissa knows this cause you've got a front row seat. Um, like, you know, I feel mentally so much better than I have ever. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know it's the work we're doing and with some of my other providers who are helping me to just get in a better place. Cause I know if I really want to be where I, I can see myself being like, Mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole, it takes a village with you guys, you know, but you do um, get in touch with Melissa. If you're noticing like, Oh, my stool is one of these weird colors, you know, like have a conversation, get some work Mm -hmm. done to figure out what's causing it. So you can feel better. You will be amazed because you don't even realize how crap you feel until you start feeling better. <laughs> oh my goodness. Isn't that the truth? And now I'm so spoiled because, know. you know, if I don't feel good for a little, you know, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm like, you know, uh, I, I know I'm such a big whiner now. It's terrible. Not, not you know, really, like I used but... to feel like crap every day. Like... I'm like, I used to do a whole day taking care of three kids with a, a migraine right you could hardly see straight and I would cook their meals and do the laundry and keep up with all the stuff now if I have a little tiny headache I'm like I'm going to bed yeah I know I feel like you know what maybe headaches are a good thing for us to tackle next week because I feel like that's a common one okay let's do it awesome well as always thank you guys so much Melissa thank you for your knowledge seriously guys I'm keeping this woman busy I can't tell you how many times a day I send her name to someone um Really, she's awesome. So please, please thank be, you. Take care of your health. That's all we got, right? <laughs> it kind of is. Yeah. And I would like to kind of put in a plug here for you too with your mental health work and with the 30 day work that you do. Um, like I do the deep stuff, but sometimes that 30 days is enough to really help people make a real change or at least start making the, the changes start. that the are tip needed. Of the iceberg, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Yes. No. 100% okay. less. You've got to start somewhere, you guys. Yep. And and then you then you start to feel better and you want to feel even better. Exactly. You get addicted. 
Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. Addicted All right, to guys. Good. Yes. And that's a good addiction. Oh my goodness. Yep. All right. Enjoy your day. Thanks again, Melissa. I appreciate it. I love our chat. Thank you, Melissa. I do too. All right. Take care.